Welcome to the Honest Business Podcast. This is the show for ambitious, value-driven business owners who are actively building a business that works for them. Hi, I'm Mae James, and I'm here to make scaling your business easier and more rewarding than ever. Each week, we will dive into simple, sustainable strategy and pragmatic leadership discussion to support you as you take imperfect action on your entrepreneurial journey. If you want to stay ahead, exceed your growth goals and have a purposeful, thriving business, then keep on listening. Hello and welcome back to the Honest Business Podcast. I hope you are well. I hope you're having a good week. Thank you for joining me. And today's quite exciting. So I'm talking to you about my learnings from my holiday. So I took a week off, second week of June 2022, and I thought I'd share with you some learnings that I've had. It was the first time in, oh, well, since, what, before COVID that I actually got out of the country and... um for a holiday is what I mean like went on a proper holiday like a beach holiday and went to a beautiful place and it was so so lovely went to Crete in Greece and it was just delightful and um I don't know if I've talked about this before but for me you know I don't really properly switch off unless I go abroad so Covid and everything's been really difficult and hard because I just didn't really ever switch off and it's something that many business owners, I think, feel. And, and many people who have, you know, a big, if you've got a big corporate job, you feel the same. So for me, when I go on holiday, it's often a big time for like reflection. It's really great for me. It's when I can truly switch off. And, you know, once I get on that plane, I can really kind of start to peel the onion, like the, the layers of the onion, I like to say, of what I've kind of gone through or done in the time since the last time. Now, obviously this time it had been nearly like, what, three years, two years? I don't know, lost at this point. Three, 2019. So yeah, that's like three years. And I just needed it. I so needed, <laughs> so needed the break. However, you know, obviously not everyone can do that, but I wanted to kind of come on and share with me my learnings from that business-wise, because I think these are interesting. And there's seven for you. have got seven learnings that you might be interested in hearing about and I'm very much looking forward to going on holiday again which I am in July of 2022 so maybe we'll come back with more but who knows (laughs) I just wanted to come back and share these in case they help you too so let's kick off and dive right in number one on this holiday I was really reflecting and I realized that work's just really good for me And this is a narrative that is not really talked about a lot, I don't think, and doesn't really, like, not get spoken about much, but working makes me really happy. It isn't toxic for me, and I just enjoy it. Like, I really love what I do, and I think that, you know, yes, I work hard, and I know some people can look at it and think you work just, you know, such a lot. Other people look at me and think you don't work very much, but, you know, my other half, for example, is like, he just makes a joke that I work seven days a week I don't work seven days a week but in terms of my head work seven days a week but it's good for me and he was we were just having a conversation with my holder and saying like it makes me happy and it is you know it's healthy it's not that I work into the ground and I like punish myself or I'm like doing something like going after something that's unsustainable but it's more just about like it can be good for us it can be good for our mental health and for me it really is like if I didn't have a business and I didn't have the kind of drive and the vision of where I'm going to, my mental health would probably be on the floor and would be really, really like, I'd be struggling then every day. Like the business helps me to keep me on the right track. And I'm sharing that in case that gives you permission to do the same, because I know that this is not something that people talk about at all. But I really, really feel strongly that it helps me massively. And you can have balance, you know, you can have balance in your life and still work a lot. So yeah, that was my first learning and that was really huge. Second learning is about client results and this is something, it's funny, I didn't know what to call these because I didn't know whether to call them learnings or more just like reaffirming statements (laughs) because these are kind of just, it's all kind of stuff I knew but like I just like, it was interesting to have a re kind of what's it called? Like, I don't know, just it was like a reconfirmation for me of like, this is true. But the, you know, client results are not really dependent on me. It's not really about me. And that's cool. Like, that's what I wanted. And that was something that I have been working towards for a long time of like really being able to help people on a deep, 
transformational level, but it not be about me. And some of you will be like, well, what do you mean? And what I mean is, is like, it's me that delivers the work, you know? Like, it's me that gets on calls with people. But I've been trying and working away, and I still am, and I plug away at it, to find ways to facilitate in a way where the person on the other end, the client, the person that's paying me, is almost like really helping themselves through the process, which some would call like coaching. Some would be like, well, that's what, you know, it's coaching. But it's not really. It's more like, it's about how can I make sure that people get what they need in the time that they have with me and then not need much more after that. And that's not me saying like, I don't want to be involved. I don't want them to contact me, blah, blah, blah. It's not that at all. It's just more about how do we increase efficiency for both parties? It's like, how do I help them so that they have more time and space in their life to not have to work if they don't want to, or to not have to panic about like the day to day. And what was interesting is my during my week off and when I got back I realized that like we're kind of achieving that and we've kind of got there and like clients had amazing wins when I was away and they'd done so much good stuff and and you know that was like really cool because I completely did not contact anyone so I just want to make clear here as well when I say I've been off I've fully been off like did not talk to any clients for a whole week but like, and I, and I knew they'd be fine, right? Like I'm, <laughs> I've got amazing clients, like they're going to be fine. There's nothing, there's no like, it's not like me holding up people's businesses, like not at all, that's not my job. But I just want to make that so that you can understand the context of this, of like, it was really good to see that what we've been doing and what I've been working towards is, is working. And it kind of proved something that I've been kind of like, a hypothesis in my head that I've been, toying up and pulling at and kind of really like interrogating and so you know one of the ways that people work with me is through Voxer which is that kind of voice walkie talkie app thing it's kind of like whatsapp for business and really been over the last year six months mass like since the start of this year especially really like pulling at how much do we need that? Like, how much do we have to use Voxer? And how much does it help people? And trying to measure the benefit of it versus the output. Now, this is something that's been really difficult because obviously it's hard to, like, measure <laughs> that. It's not that quantifiable. But we, I've been doing it and we've been kind of, like, looking at that. And it's just really cool that this week it did kind of, like, prove that, you know, you don't need... We don't, you know, you don't have to talk every day. You don't need to have this constant check in. You don't need, you know, less contact can be better. And, you know, I don't talk to my clients every day anyway. Like some of them I do, if that's what they wish to. It's very much a self guided thing. So, like, if if they have that in their package, different people have different things. But if someone has box access in their package, it's up to them. And some of my clients never talk to me. Like, they just check in on our calls and that's all they need. Or they have it there just in case there's an emergency and they want to chat me or, you know, I might check in with them and then they'll send me a message back two days later. Like, we have a very chill arrangement. Sometimes people use it every single day, multiple times a day. It's kind of like a person-on-person basis. But across the board, from about, I'm trying to think, October, November last year, we, I started trying to switch how we used it and trying to be more intentional with it and amongst other things like we it's hard to go in I could do a whole podcast on about Voxer and how we're using it and how I'm shifting it and how we're trying to like measure things but all I'm gonna say is that it was really good this week to kind of see that come to life and check in and see kind of where we're at with it because I love Voxer and I love talking to clients um, but there's a fine line between talking to them and it being helpful, talking to them and not really being helpful, and then the time that it takes for me. Because there's been times in my, you know, with clients where, like, my whole day has been taken when I used to have a lot more. Now I have very few one-to-one clients. But when I did have more, and I still never had that many because <laughs> I didn't want to. <laughs> like, I was always like, no, we can only have a handful kind of thing. Oh, maybe six or seven you know, I was, there was times where I could spend a whole day on there and it was just getting mad and out of hand. So anyway, we've kind of got that going on and it was just really cool and an interesting learning. Number three, I learned that strategy always wins. Like strategy always, always wins and always will win. Like 
so many people don't understand what strategy is, they don't understand what business strategy is, what growth strategy is, what marketing strategy is, what sales strategy is, blah, 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 operational strategy, like so many different things. Strategy really is like the difference between it like going well and not, in my opinion, because like, it's like, do you know what you're going to do? Do you know what the plan is? Do you know how you're going to get to where you want to get to? And so for me, it was just a reminder of like, yeah, strategy always fucking wins and it always will. And it's cool. Like, that's why I love strategy. It's what I do all day, every day. I write strategy for people, I create strategy, I audit strategy, I help them work out, is it the right strategy for them? Do they need to change something? And that lights me on fire and it was really good to just consolidate that when I was away. Number four is a one where like, I just laughed when I was away. Like people fall for anything. I just want to say that like, people are really naive. Like I'm full on, like I always say that consumers are getting more and more intelligent and they're getting more and more savvy and they are. But there's also this other side of it where, like, people really fall for anything. Like, people love a trend, they love a hype, they just love, like, an immediate hit of dopamine, right? They love that immediate excitement. People love drama. They People love, like, leading into all this stuff that I just think is a load of rubbish, but, like, whatever. And it was just really interesting when I was away to see like I just was like oh my goodness like, it's just so interesting that people don't look forward and they they just like stay focused in this bubble of like their current reality and they're not like they're just not aware and I just want to wake people up and be like you need to be more conscious you need to be more conscious of your business you need to be more self-aware you need to be more self-aware of your business and you need to work out what the fuck you're doing and again like it was just a time for me to just be like what is going on here um I was just looking at a few things when I was away and I just thought, this is bizarre. It's bizarre behaviour, it's bizarre mentality, it's hilarious watching people be sheep. And I shouldn't say it's hilarious because it's not, it's kind of worrying really, but I just kind of laughed because I was like, I don't know what to do here. Do I cry or do I laugh? Like, people are wild. Like, it's just, it doesn't make sense to me. As someone who's very strategic, very forward thinking and very just like, well, what you see is what you get with me, which is probably why you listen to this podcast. It just doesn't make sense to me. And I find it very bizarre. And so that was something that I really was like, hmm, interesting. Okay. (laughs) Number five is a big one. And this is something that I've not really talked about. I haven't talked about it ever, but I, I haven't really talked about. And this was huge for me. When I was away, I really reflected and realized that I've been hiding I've been hiding a lot. And some of you might be like, you don't hide. Like, you're there every day. You vlog your life every day. You share with us every day. <laughs> like, if, you, if you're over on Instagram, then you might be like, mate, you're not hiding at all. But I have been. Like, I realised I've been hiding. Um, and I also, but I also realised that's okay. You know, and part of that was on purpose. Well, most of it was on purpose. And yeah, I just realised, like, I've been hiding and that's okay. And I didn't, you know, I had to do it and I've had to go through, you know, my year, you know, we're we're halfway through 2022. I've had a really great year. I've also had a really horrific year. I've also had a really hard year. Business-wise, it's been a good year. But I want to be honest with you on here and say to you, like, I've been hiding. You know, the plans for the business really changed last year when my mum died. My mum died in September and, you know, like, well, obviously my life turned upside down and, and everything's changed and who I am in terms of like who I am in my day to day life has changed and what I do and, and it's just really hard and the you know I took a decision in November once I'd come back to work I came back to work in October I took September off came back to work in October November I made a decision at the end of November of like what the strategy was going to be for going forward because we'd had a strategy you know we had a plan for 2022 but I had to make a decision and a call. And so we pulled a lot of things, you know, I had a business that we were going to go and launch and I had to pull that. So we didn't go and do that. And that's still kind of just in the sidelines and hasn't moved. Um, But I also had to make a decision for May James as a brand of what we were going to do. And it was hard, like, well, it wasn't hard because I had to just make a decision and get on with it. And I had so many other things going on that I just did it. But what I mean is, is when you're ambitious and when you've got plans and when you so deeply want to help people and you have such a clear mission it's like that kind of really pushes you and it challenges you because you get frustrated I get frustrated because I'm like why the fuck can't I just do everything I want to do so I have been hiding 
and hiding's the wrong word. Maybe it's just like not as visible as, you know, I'd like to be. But I also haven't really had a choice. You know, I've got to put my life first. I have to put my family first. I have to put my health first. I have to put my happiness first. And that's good. That's right. That's what I should do. And that's what I have done. Um, You know, my health's been... Well, my health's always tough. I have a chronic illness. In case you're listening, you're like, I don't have a clue what you're going on about. I have a chronic illness. And it's just tough. And I, but I'm, I'm sharing this on here, as you can tell, it's like a really open and honest podcast that is to, to just say, like, I have been hiding, but it's okay. But also the fun part of the learning, and this is kind of a two-pronged thing, is that I think it's time to change that. And that's what's really exciting for me. And I'm, I'm looking forward to it, you know? Like, I really am excited for what's to come. It's going to be a slow transition (laughs) it's gonna be a like crawling out of it rather than like a bang this is it this is here like and I it's not that many of you might not see it like feel any different changes and that's good if you do like that's fine but there are gonna be some changes and I am ready to expand our visibility and you know expand the business and that doesn't mean in terms of like money even it means just more so even in terms of like the impact and how we help people and where I show up and how we help people for free like that's really important to me you know and and I've had to I've been through hell and back and there's no kind of buttering it up there's there's nothing I can really say that is gonna make it any different you know like it is what it is and I know that my honesty has really helped people I think to who've also gone through things maybe it's similar or maybe it's completely different but I'm not alone I know I'm you know my circumstances I'm very privileged and lucky in many ways and so I just wanted to come on here to say that it's okay if you've also been hiding and if you've also had to kind of shift up what's going on but the exciting thing is I feel like I am at a point where we can start to shift that and as I said it's going to be a slow move I'm not doing any crazy big wild things because you know many of the factors that meant that I had to slow down are still the same (laughs) so nothing's not much has really changed in that area and it's mostly about me being able to have the mental capacity to navigate that and have additional people supporting me and have the resources to be able to do that etc etc so yeah it's really interesting I'm kind of in a spot and the holiday really helped me to feel like yeah you know what May I think it's okay I think it's time now to you can come out a bit more you can peel back more of the onion <laughs> again as I, as I said in that analogy and we can maybe do a bit more and that's great and I know that and I hope that I've modeled to people that you can be really graceful through really challenging life situations that got quite deep didn't it <laughs> yeah I mean I called this the honest business podcast for a reason and I, I always said I was going to be honest with you and I I am Number six is an interesting one. When I was away, I really kind of felt and and saw, not saw, I don't want to say saw as in there was an event. There wasn't like an event that happened there. Just, I mean, I just, just could see people underestimate you and like people will underestimate you, but it is a good thing. And this is really important. Okay. So like people can underestimate you and they will. And I've had that like since day dot of like you're too young you're too this you're too that whatever blah 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 do you know this you haven't done this you haven't done that like you know everybody wants to underestimate people you'll never do this you're from here you don't have this money you're not that person you're not this like you know it's just never ending and people will underestimate you but I've also learned that it's a really good thing like it's why I have so much drive it's why I'm so determined it's why I don't give a shit what people are like if someone does underestimate me I'm like right let's go let's prove you wrong like it really I think it gives you a lot of fire in your belly I'm not saying it's right people shouldn't underestimate people but it's kind of human nature and human psychology of like people are just gonna do it anyway for the rest of time but yeah just I wanted you to to think in case that sparks something for you like people will underestimate you but it's okay like you can turn it into a good thing and you can kind of prove them wrong And I think proving people wrong is fun and it's not that you should use it as a toxic thing and it's not that you ever tell them, but I think it's just more of a like, it's okay if people think something and you are gonna, 
you have a mission inside of you to do it otherwise obviously that can get very toxic so please don't (laughs) you know you need to work out what that means for you and use your emotional intelligence and kind of get support if that's something you need with that but I think a small amount of people underestimating you can be very kind of motivating in some respects the final learning from my holiday slash week off is a really good one and it's simple but it's really important and that's that slow and steady wins the race like being really thought out and methodical does work and you know for me like I've built my business well it's hard this one right I was gonna say I built my business very quite slowly and steadily some people will look at it and say no you've really like gone for it and you really have grown it fast it's kind of hard right either way because everybody's parameters of what that means are totally different so what I, how I say and see it and what I'm suggesting here is saying basically like, to me, you know, I haven't done stuff that would purposely get me to certain points because it's just not my style. It's not how I work. It doesn't feel good to me. It doesn't sit in my integrity, but that has meant that I've had to take a hit from a profit perspective, from a validation of social hierarchy perspective of uh how valuable I use as society perspective like all sorts of random things and I just wanted to really say today that it's okay and I'm quite comfortable with it now and I continue to believe that slow and steady wins the race and you know I was just talking to someone the other day about our strategy going forward recently was in London the week before I went away on this holiday mapping out our kind of key operate like key operational growth strategy going forward and like one of the things we mapped out is a product that I've wanted to launch since 2021 and is now not going to be launching until 2024 so it we're going to sell it in Q4 of 2023 and it'll but it'll not kick off until Q1 of 2024 and I don't think like I'm fine about it like I'm good because it's me that's saying there's got to put off (laughs) the people are like well you could just launch it and I'm like nope it's not ready like we're not at a point where that makes sense and at some point I will go into more deals as to why that is but right now that's not the episode for it but um I was thinking about this idea of like long-term strategy and you know that I really live it and I really embrace it and it really benefits us and it benefits the brand and it helps the people that work with me to understand what I'm about and I think it it helps clients to be served fully and that the best they can be but I also say it to say like slow and steady wins the race you know I've got something that we have a name for we have brand for we have deliverables for I know what we're doing I know what I want it to be everything but I'm not launching it and I'm not going to launch it not even this year not like next year we're going to enroll for it and it'll start in 2024 and I'm quite comfortable with it because I'm realistic about where the business is at but it's I think that only comes from well I I don't want to say wisdom but like it, it comes from having a real strong emotional intelligence having that high self awareness of the business and yourself and also you're confident being confident in your value and what you do And yeah, if that's a lesson for you today, I don't know if it is, but I just would really encourage you to not get swept up in this short term. If you haven't scaled to a million in X amount of time, you failed. And if you don't have a 10, 12 figure business, then you're this, that, and you're like, you know, all this random crap. And and then if you don't want a seven figure business that you're worthless, like that's rubbish. If you don't want a seven figure business, great. Many of us don't. If you don't want to, multi six figure business fine if you want to make 30 grand a year fine like this whole thing of like success has so distorted everyone it's untrue and I just hope that this maybe gives you a permission slip to think about how you want to approach growth and for me like slow and steady is really important to me and it allows me to be exceptional at what I do and treat people how I want to be treated and to service people how I want to service them and for people to feel loved and seen in what we do and that really is important to me so that is it for today's episode thank you for listening if you got this far those are my seven learnings from my holiday in June 
I'd love to know if you what you think of this. If you had any thoughts come up or anything came up for you, feel free to drop me a message on Instagram. But I will speak to you next week for another episode. And if why not have a thing? If you've enjoyed this episode, go back to the catalogue because we have quite a few episodes now and there are many, many incredible episodes. And I think they're really useful. I know they're useful. You've told me they're useful. But yeah, go back and have a look at what you haven't listened to and just pick one and maybe pick one with a title that you're not really that bothered about and see if there's something in there. You never know. Your next kind of aha moment or breakthrough or up level idea might come from one of those episodes. But for now, I'll leave you with that. Have a great evening, day, morning, whatever you're doing and I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Honest Business Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure that you are subscribed. And if you'd like to support the podcast, please share it with others and leave a rating and review. To catch up with all the latest from me, you can follow me on Instagram at may.james underscore, where I share the raw, uncut, behind the scenes reality of what running multiple businesses every day truly looks like. As always, links and any resources that were mentioned in the episode will be in the show notes below. That's all for this episode and I look forward to seeing you next time.